Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to our remote writing workshop. We are going to talk about goal setting today because 2021 is fastly approaching and we want to make sure everybody is ready and set on their goals. So as we approach the new year, we all begin thinking about resolutions. Of course, hope shines in our eyes, how we can do things better, improve our lives, our health, our savings, etc. Of course, we end up keeping most of these resolutions for about a week, but what if we set attainable goals for writing? It's it's completely within your reach to set realistic goals that will help you grow as a writer. So let 2020, 2021 wow, be the year that you become the writer you always wanted to be. So let's start out with the importance of setting goals as a writer. How can it help? Erin. Well, first, let's give a shout out to 2021 that's coming. Yay. 2020 behind us. Woo. Um, is leaving her, <laughs> leaving all the bad stuff in 2020. Just Exactly. Clean slate. Yeah. So with goal setting, as with anything in life, you can accomplish much more or at least much more in a timely fashion when you have clear cut plans, which include deadlines. Um, like how many of us achieve tasks without lists and reminders? I certainly don't. And most things don't magically happen. Um, again, not in a timely sort of way without a conscious effort to achieve them. So if you've been floundering with your writing, possibly for years, uh, this might be why. Because without specific goals, you can really get overwhelmed and your dreams sometimes might seem too lofty and unattainable. So if your goal is to write a novel or work of nonfiction, you might never even begin writing if you haven't laid out a comprehensive plan that you can follow step by step to reach your end goal. So these concrete goals and deadlines can serve to make your dreams as a writer attainable. So think of planning and goal setting as essential tools for finding true success as a writer. Definitely. I don't know about you, Erin, but I need to write absolutely everything down. I have lists yep. upon lists upon lists. I can't even go to the grocery store without a list because I will just not remember what to buy and then I'll get home. Remember, I missed like eight things. Yeah, it's I, I need lists for absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. Same with writing. Awesome. All right. So where should someone start when mapping out goals? Well, first you want to be specific when deciding on what your goal is. So instead of simply saying, I wanna write a novel this year, you must be precise because unclear goals are rarely attained. So instead set a goal of, I want to write an hour a day or I want to write 500 words a day or two pages a day. With specifics and details, your larger plan of just writing a novel can actually become a reality because you can cross off each step as you get closer to your final goal. So let's say the average novel is about 75,000 words. So if you set a goal of writing a specific number of words a day, you can get closer each time you sit down to write. And this is measurable. So suddenly that end goal is very attainable. It's also important to be realistic in setting your goals. And that's because you want these goals to be, you wanna be able to reach them. Uh, you want to limit disappointment and improve your probability of success as well. So really sit down and figure out how many hours a day you can actually devote to writing. So think about your daily schedule with work, family, self-care, and be really realistic. Figure out when you can carve out a dedicated time to write and for how long. It needs to be a length of time you can stick to without fail, so don't overshoot it. Um, then figure out how many days a week you can de devote that time each day, and you want to be practical. So don't say, I'm going to do it all seven days because everyone needs a day of rest. So again, be realistic. Um, if you want to get crazy, do six days. <laughs> but perhaps most importantly, really give yourself permission to readjust these goals if they're not working for you. So if you get started and this very noble goal of writing an hour a day is clearly not working with all you have going in your life, readjust that goal. It happens. We have so many things going on in our life. Don't feel bad and just throw it out and say, oh, this isn't working. Readjust because you don't want to get down on yourself if you don't make your initial goal and stop writing altogether. That would be awful. Just remember that everybody, CEOs, generals in war, they're constantly changing their strategies to ensure success. So you should do that as well as a writer. So always feel free to readjust your goals so that they remain attainable. Very important. Definitely. I, that's actually something I've done too, because I set a goal to read 35 books by the end of 2020. I'm currently on 25. I'm a little bit behind, but I was setting very lofty reading goals, like read 50 pages a night. And sometimes if I've had a very heavy work day 
or I'm just exhausted, reading 50 pages is, it seems like a lot. And so I, you know, I would get discouraged if I wasn't reading the 50 pages, I would get behind and then sometimes just skip it all together. Whereas just breaking those down and, you know, reading 25 pages, like when I get off of work or, you know, during lunch or something like that, when I'm, you know, not really thinking about it, I would actually end up reading more pages and then get closer to my goal when I started doing that instead of just setting, 50 pages a night, 50 pages a night, 50 pages a night, and limiting myself to when and how much I needed to do in that specific amount of time. Exactly. And the main idea is just not to get to that point where you go, oh, forget it. I'm just going to stop reading my books for the year because it's obviously not going to happen. So mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. All right. Speaking of ensuring success, what are some ways that writers can improve their chances of reading, uh, of reaching their goals? Well, one way is to keep a journal. So you can keep track of when you're most productive. So which days, what time of day, where you write best, and then using what you've tracked in your journal, you can use that information to readjust your goals. Um, you also, it's extremely important to protect your writing time and make it a priority. So many people think, oh, well, you know, this isn't really necessary. I can let that go. And they push it off and push it off. Um, but it's easy to put it last on your, list um, when you're being pulled in all directions by your family, but you want to give your specific writing goals precedence and you need to draw boundaries with people in your life and put your needs first. Uh, don't use all the drama going on as a way of proc procrastinating because that's extremely easy to do. I do it. We all do it. Um, and you place more importance on these other things in life. And they are very important. But make sure that your writing is a priority and these goals are a priority. Um, another thing you can do is set mini goals that are very time bound. So while you've set these ongoing goals, um, such as write a certain amount of pages per day, um, you also want to set mini goals that are very attainable, such as uh, finish an outline in two weeks or set up your author website in 30 days, because as we always discuss, it's important to build your author platform beginning when you're just start writing or write one blog a week. So these additional mini goals will keep you motivated because you can regularly meet them along the way as you're still doing the write however many words per day as well. Um, another great thing to do is find a friend to hold you accountable. It can be a writer friend, which would be ideal, but simply any friend that you can check in with, uh, tell them your goals. And that's a great way to hold yourself accountable. And you can do the same for them. It doesn't have to be the same writing goal for them. Um, but if you're, if you're only accountable to yourself, it's a lot easier to slack off. But if there's someone else involved, you're much more likely to reach those goals. Accountability buddy. Yes, <laughs> I have. I have quite a few for working out and eating healthy. We text each other when we want, when we're craving, you know, unhealthy food and reminding us of our goals. Um, you know, it's, it's much better to do things with a friend too. So um, it's always, it's always way better because then you can motivate each other, send each other motivational things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. All right, Erin, what is our assignment for this week? Well, start mapping out your goals for the new year, make them realistic detailed, attainable, write them down, be very specific, and don't be afraid to reevaluate once you figure out what's working for you. And remember, make yourself and your writing a priority in the new year. You are Definitely. very important and so is your writing. Definitely. Thank you so much. All of that is so important to remember. Such great advice. And you guys, I would love if you commented on this video what your uh, 2021 goals are for writing. Um, definitely let us know and we will try our best to help you achieve those goals and put out new content to help you keep reaching those goals. So if you guys you know, want information on anything else or if you have suggestions for 2021 videos or anything you'd like to see from Erin and I, please leave a comment or send us a DM. We love hearing hearing your suggestions. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next time. Bye.